So Asmir Begovic just exposed the dumbest and most prevalent goalkeeper myth that exists. One of the myths we have to try and kill really is the near post myth. Ooh. Controversy. Pretty much every goalkeeper has been told at one point in their life, never get beat near post. He gave a brilliant articulation of why this myth has been brought about by ignorant pundits and field players that don't know a single thing about goalkeeping. It's a very lazy commentary because if you look at the pace of a ball, if someone's 5-10 yards in front of you and the pace beats you, it doesn't matter if it's near post, far post, any post, it's going to beat you. And over the years, there's been a ton of discussion about this topic. I mean, it's such a prevalent and frustrating idea that it gets brought up in nearly every instance a goalkeeper gets beat near post, whether they're the highest level goalkeepers ever or they're just starting out in the goal. As per the maxim, everyone knows that goalkeepers shouldn't be beaten at their near post, right? Well, few things are more irritating than misinformation surrounding the goalkeeper position, and this myth is right at the top of the list. If the ball goes in at the far post, criticism rarely follows, but if it sneaks in at the near post, fans and pundits are quick to pass blame. It's lazy analysis and something that doesn't make sense. There is a quote that Borussia Dortmund keeper Roman Burki attributed to Kasper Schmeichel a couple of years ago that sums up this point. Anyone who has played in goal knows it's a huge area, and you try to cover the whole goal. You can't try and cover the whole goal and guarantee the ball won't go in at the near post if it's a great shot. Near post, far post, you try to cover it all and you're not happy if it goes in anywhere. There are far too many variables involved, the angle, distance, speed and the height of the shot, and reaction time, just to name a few, to say that the ball should never go in at the near post. As you can probably tell based on Casper Schmeichel's take, there is a whole host of things that go into saving a goal besides just which post it goes into. And this lazy analysis by pundits just hurts the GK Union overall. Because if young goalkeepers and even experienced professionals hear enough never get beat near post, it's going to have a negative effect in their overall gameplay. They might go as so far to adjust their basic technique that's accurate and proper in order to try and get beat less on the near post, even though that's not an actual issue that exists. The only time really goalkeepers, you really, I think if you're going to get really constructive criticism is obviously when it goes through them. Mm. You know, you re really work a lot on our three, four yard goal, our bubble as we call it. You have to protect that bubble. If someone has to beat you, they have to do something magical. Are you actively discouraging this idea of don't get beat at the near post, are you actively saying just close the angle regardless of where it is? What we want as goalkeepers fundamentally is for a striker to beat us. Mm. Uh, if they're going to beat us, m beat me. Yeah. I don't want to make up your mind. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to make it easy. I don't want to give you, make a decision for you. And so this is the real answer on how to be a high level goalkeeper. And this is what pundits, coaches, and other goalkeepers should really be looking at when a goalkeeper gets beat near post. You have to make the player beat you. If you get beat through you, then that is on you. That is a mistake. I tell my young goalkeepers this all the time and it applies all the way up to the very, very top, the best of the best, the Allisons and the De Gea's of the world. They will repeat this ad nauseum. You have to make the striker or the player with the ball beat you. Do not make it easy on them. Do not cheat so much one way that then it opens up another part of the goal. Be confident and rely on your reactions and your technique and make the striker think about it. So if I can put a lot more pressure back on the attacker, make him think, maybe let my defenders influence a little bit more, pressure of the situation, maybe a bad touch, then maybe I've done my job. So that's what we talk about. Goalkeepers actually do their job sometimes without making a save yeah, yeah, because of the decision making and how difficult they make it on a striker. And then this is absolute gold from Ajmir at the end here. And the best bit to remember if you actually want to get better in the goal, that a lot of times goalkeepers will make their best saves without even touching the ball. I call these intimidation saves, AKA you put so much pressure on the ball, you delay long enough, or you come out so quickly before the striker's even able to get his head up and get a look in on goal that he ends up putting it wide because you're out there so quick. I would argue that's just as good as any insane diving upper 90 save, if not even better. I can tell you as a pro myself that I've made more intimidation saves that have saved goals and won games than I have actual physical action that have saved shots in the goal. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this and learned something a little bit different of a video. And that's all I've got for you today, but hope you enjoyed. See you next time, guys.